Hey guys, what's up? It's Heather with the Moscow, and today we're going to come out here and do the July garden tour since it's July 27th and it's not going to be July very much longer. We went on vacation this month and um, this is usually the month of the year where I slack on the fertilizer and then we go on vacation and then we get back and I'm tired and videos slow down. I also have two new garden friends to introduce you to. The first one we've got here is Ray, master of cuteness. Um, we had dogs before and they were old and they died um, to be quite blunt and it has been some time and it is now time to fill our garden again with puppies, destructive puppies, um, but they're cute as they can be and I have so enjoyed coming out here with her in the morning and then yesterday we got another one. Hold on, I'll show you. Yesterday we got Minaru. She's a black lab and um, we've not had a lab before. She's buggy, um, but she is very sweet and they are learning to play together, um, learning a new routine. So we didn't get a whole lot of sleep last night, but super cute. So you'll see them running around and keeping me company out here. Um, but let's actually do a garden tour and take a look around before they gimbal us. So on this end, again, we've slacked on the fertilizer. We were getting a ton of rain, thank goodness. So things just didn't die out, but there's our Super Junior Bordeaux, blackberry bush. We harvested the garlic out of this together. There's my Mother's Day pot. It's just so serene and pretty. I really love the contrast of these two plants right here. So the sedum and the um, hookera. It's getting very much eaten. It is full blown. It is full blown Japanese beetle thyme. These are all teddy bear sunflowers. They are also getting eaten a little bit, um, but we planted those after we removed the garlic. We also planted another succession of zinnia seeds so that when ours succumb to black or to powdery mildew, we will have something there. I did plant some basil here, but it died. Um, and my cucumbers, I'll show you in a little bit, they are doing okay, but they're not producing as many cucumbers as I would like and I wanted a succession plant so I went ahead and put a couple seeds yesterday right here. We do have time left. Um, I think people miss out sometimes on opportunities to do that. We do have time left to do that so we're going to give that a try. This is why it's Supertunia uh, Vista White and it could stand to be cut back. Uh, again when I got back from vacation I definitely have slacked on the fertilizing I have at least gotten about half the weeds under control again, so that's good. This is Blue Mamani volvulus. Love this plant. Love it. I should have used it more this year. Um, last year I had it in a container and it kind of fizzled out. But this year we've gotten a lot more rain. That's not even hooked up on drip. Um, and she's doing beautiful. So it's full sun down here, doing great. This is a couple blueberries that I need to put out in the landscape. We're leaving this bed empty for garlic. I've got a eggplant here that is on its deathbed plenty of time if you need time i'm the person to call this is another eggplant there's a ray um, and then i've got some different types of eggplant right here and they're doing pretty well i actually need to come out here and harvest but i wanted to show you guys i've got like the japanese fingerling eggplant and these are my first two but look at all the blooms on this plant um, there's bugs everywhere out here so you know looking really good i will harvest those today and eat them all of those eggplant, I love eggplant. I'm the only one in my family that does enjoy it, but I'm very happy with how this one's looking and this one's producing. We didn't do nearly as many jalapenos as last year because I have plenty of candied jalapenos already, um, but these are my two jalapeno plants and they are producing like crazy, looking great. I've actually got a plan for all these jalapenos, so I'm leaving them on the plant until I have, um, I'm having a party with poke bowls and I put fresh jalapenos in my poke bowls and I love if you're having people over to give them something you grew. Here's a camisiferous that I need to plant out. This would be great to plant out, especially somewhere where we can cut on it to make winter containers. And then there's a super bells right here that's holding on for dear life. That pot there and this bed here are sitting empty because they were full of different types of squash and they got hit by uh, vine borer, so they are gone. I have replanted out my squash. I have replanted them out in the, the production garden in the back. The bugs out here are intense. 
um, so that it just won't go away. Now my lens is all foggy. Good job, Heather. So that we can get more squash. There will be plenty of time for them to produce again. It's early in the year. And I think I'm actually going to treat them with BT injected into the stem. So we don't have that problem again because I do love squash. Let's go over here to the new bed, we call it, I guess. Here's our basil basil, by the way. This is the basil plant you need. It's perfect. Love it. So this is the new bed and I'm loving a few things about it. I just came through here and hit it very quickly for some weeds. Again, when we got back from vacation, I had to blow torch the weeds. This is kind of what it looks like after you blow torch if they're really large. Um, I need to come back in here and fertilize. You're supposed to do that yesterday and I didn't. It doesn't look like it right now because it rained yesterday and such, but these have done so well this year. They are a sea of beautiful bright color, especially when the sun is shining on them. They're fluorescent almost and it's great. Um, so we've got our blue spruce here, which is looking fabulous. We've got our supertunia vista jazzberry and our puppers. And then I put some mahogany splendor hibiscus that I neglected, didn't do much with, started inside, just now planted them outdoors. Maybe they'll be big enough to cut, maybe they won't. But they are taking off pretty good, so that is pretty promising. Got our daylilies here. These are the primal scream. I've um, got several shorts about them. Love that bright orange color. Again, I love very saturated colors in my garden. My um, limelight hydrangea is blooming and looking beautiful. I can't wait for this thing to be a little bit more full. I do need to do a better job of pruning, and I may have to prune it all the way back to here this year. I mean, they're fast growing, so it shouldn't be a problem. But prune it all the way back to here because I've got like this two-story effect, and we, we don't need that in our lives. Cut. A couple celosia plants and some forget-me-nots, which these have produced very well. Very impressed with those. And we've also got our um, bananas and cream daylilies here and our calla lily. If you'll remember, these daylilies, uh, not daylilies, bananas and cream daisies got hit super hard with vole um, damage. And the ones, I, I replaced two of them. This one here that's blooming. And I think can't remember which one and when I have been putting things in here from now on I'm putting them in vol bags and that really does take care of it I also did um, chicken wire under things that weren't permanent plantings just to see if it would work and the chicken wire is working as well I didn't think it would because the holes in the chicken wire are so big but when I did that I did that with all of my super tunias. that's what has kept them from being eaten alive this year um, by the voles, I have a huge vole problem. When I had dogs before, I didn't have as big of a vole problem. Gimbal just died. Okay, so back to this bed over here. This is now gonna be shaky. I'm super sorry. Um, also, we were supposed to get two dogs and we've got one more on the way. Um, apparently, like you shouldn't leave me to my own devices, picking out seeds, probably shouldn't do that picking out puppies. She's the extra. Ray. This is the extra. Could you say no to that face? I don't think so. I don't think so. I didn't, obviously. And the voles came and systemically ate them all. So the two things, the two prong approach that's really working is A, you gotta bury them in the, the things that help. And again, this is not their best representation. I mean, look how large these plants are from just one little four inch can, but they need to be fertilized. Um, and I'm overdue on the fertilizing. I find that I have to fertilize like every four days is the key. Um, but also these things, these things that you stick in the ground and then they vibrate because the backs were keeping the voles from eating the actual roots. You hear that? But they were coming along and the foliage that was on the top, they were still eating that because this was so infiltrated. The minute we put these in, I started to notice bowl trails in the grass. Again, we don't have real grass. We have weeds that we just cut to be the right size. So I don't really mind if they tunnel in that actually. And I've thought many times about like getting better grass, but I guess it really doesn't bother me that much as long as it's all green and full. So anyhow, this is that bed. 
and only the ones we planted this year are blooming. The ones from last year are not, but again, you know, perennials, they take a couple years to take off. All of the seeds that we planted for um, poppies are done, <laughs> didn't do very well. The canna lilies here, Jason loves canna lilies. I do need to come deadhead these. Um, I don't really like the way their foliage looks, but that's neither here nor there. His hibiscus, these are the two plants that he likes the most. This hibiscus is a summerific something something, and it puts on quite a show. Again, bug pressure is bad right now, but these blooms are gorgeous, gorgeous, and they put on quite a show. And this is a nice big plant. This is kind of the area you see most from the windows of our house. We do need to fill in with some more stuff. I do want to fill in this area with more foliage based stuff so that I'm not dependent upon seasonal blooms to make this area look good. More evergreen things, some lower petalum, get some yellow, red, and blue going in these beds. I do want to fill these beds in with more foliage based plants, things that don't depend upon blooms to look good. Um, and I want to make sure we're incorporating yellow, blue, and red because there's not enough of that over here, but more foliage interest down here. Some evergreen interest, some small evergreen pieces, um, like an Anna's Magic Ball Arborvito for the yellow, or one of the Glow Blue Bruce Bluces on <laughs> blue spruces on this side, um, and some lower petalum. Something for red, yellow, and blue to have that interest. This is supposed to be a pathway, but the kids kept moving my rocks. I need to move that cow. Calla, canna lily, canna lily, calla lily, calla lily. You need to move this calla lily over there with other calla lilies. Then a path here, a wide path though, so that the kids can walk through here with their vehicles. And then I'm going to line either side with some lamb's ear. Ray is just a digging. Ray. What are you doing? Ray, come here. Ray. Come here, girl. Come here. Come on. You can't dig. No digging. Look at you. Look at you. You're a mess. Come on. Come on. Come on. You can't dig right there. It's a drip tube, man. I'm going to do two borders, mini hedges of lamb's ear. Because I love lamb's ear. Always looks great. And it's blue. Need some blue down here. Then we need to actually cut back those weeds, take out those hydrangeas, and put them over there in that line of hydrangeas, which is also not looking the way that I want it to, but maybe they just need some time, you know? Give it some time. And then I bought four little lime hydrangeas to get that five foot hedge going. And then I need to figure out what to do on this side of the hedge. Look at them. Is it a garden tour? or a puppystus. Might be a puppystus. Look how cute they are. We have these two pots here to like be the edge of the walkway. I just need to come out here and work on this. I just need to work on it. Let's, let's digress. On this side though, I want it to be all hosta. From here, all the way over to probably over there. This is our Japanese maple. I'm gonna give her a C plus, okay? She just, she's making it. She's got new growth, but she's not what she looked like when I bought her. Probably some neglect issue. One of my favorite hostas though is these giant green ones. I love these. They're super bright. They light up the shade so well. And that autumn frost hosta right there. So next spring, probably, maybe this fall, but probably next spring, I'm gonna dig several of these up, divide them heavily, spread them out more. I've got more hostas um, and I just want it to be hosta, 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 hosta until you get to these, you know, hydrangeas in the back that like again, look a little spindly. They did get hit with a late winter frost and I think it took their blooms, but they're re-blooming so that shouldn't have been an issue. Um, and a lot of these, it's their second year. That one's a third year, but these are all second year. So they need some time. Ever since I created this bed right here, I wanted to um, do some annuals in this like swoop that comes out. So I did that this year and it took forever for them to take off, but they're looking a lot better. So we've got my favorite red begonias 
that is a climbing hydrangea to go up this tree. There's also one on this side because eventually I would like to do a bed on this side as well, climbing hydrangea over here. Um, and then I love the contrast of the white caladiums with the red begonias. Got this new bed. I made a video on it. I need to go edit that and post it so you can see it going in, but here it is. So let's go take a look. So on, let's go to the front of the house. On this side of the house was always a bed. And this all started when I didn't like this bed. I started to move things around and I didn't like that. I started to replace things and then I took it out and didn't know what I wanted to do. And then we were gonna do something in the house. I didn't wanna put plants there. And now I've decided on a full hedge all the way around of Limetta hydrangeas. They get like three by three or four by four. Um, and they put up these chartreuse, white that turned to chartreuse Limetta blooms, which contrasts really well with the orangish red of the house. That's why I really like blue things, vibrant things that contrast well. I also have my pots here with my Vista Jazzberry. Um, I recently cut those back because they did get neglected while I was on vacation. Gave them a shot of fertilizer. They need more fertilizer, but I also think some of my other Vista Jazzberries are getting eaten by either aphids or something else, um, maybe budworms. So I need to treat them and I've just been neglecting them. So for the amount of care that I've given them, they look pretty good. So this bed was already here. I wanted to mirror it on this side because I thought it looked silly that nothing was over here. The grass wasn't growing over there either. And I put in these pots, I would like to put a weeping blue spruce in these pots. Um, and I need to get some more mulch to finish this off. But now I'm really enjoying it. I love that it's symmetrical. It feels very finished and really love this, how this bed has turned out. And they are growing significantly. When I got these, they were super, super small and they are putting on blooms and I can't wait to see them fully bloomed out because they are super beautiful. On this side of the bed, I did completely reno this bed when we moved in except for these two peonies that have been here. I've got my two carding mill roses and if you're unfamiliar with Japanese beetles, this is what they look like. They eat roses especially bad. Dahlia is pretty bad too. Um, so there's some new growth on these roses. They do look the best they've ever looked. Um, and look at the cute puppy in the Rudbeckia. Ah, no. So then we've got Black Eyed Susan Rudbeckia here. This was three that was like clustered on the edge and then something in the middle. And it was way too big over here. I didn't space appropriately. So I dug them out and divided them and placed them here. And then this is my swaft of um, lamb's ear. This is one of my favorite things in my garden. It just consistently looks good. Um, and I do love it. I had cut it back earlier this year, tried to transplant some pieces to get it to grow in. I eventually bought a lamb's ear, divided that, and then put it in here, and it's looking really, really good. Here is a Vista Jazzberry that's looking a little better. Again, I did just cut these. I do need to treat them, um, but they're looking a little better. Look at these blooms here. So pretty. Can't wait for these to get really large and form a hedge and fill in and then we do need to plant up these containers. There will be some space in front of the containers and around them that we could have the opportunity to do something. Uh, we'll see what we do with that. We may leave it blank though because the, the rest for the eye is really good. So let's go to the back to the production garden. So here we are. This is the production garden. We have had some wins and some failures here like everybody does every year. The tomatoes are better than they've ever been. The cucumbers, I think, are getting a little bit too much shade on their vertical trellis. The corn was doing phenomenal and then it did get hit by a windstorm. Baby, she's right there. You looking for Ray? You looking for your sister? Come here. So the potatoes in the grow bags has been a complete fail. Um, as they have died, I've put sunflowers in their place. There she is. That one's got a teddy bear sunflower that's ready to bloom. The other teddy bear sunflower bloomed and it looked great. The sweet peas, I don't know on that friend. I just don't know. Um, this has been a bed that just really hasn't done well for me. Um, I've planted it several different times and still not getting very far. Currently I put some sunflowers in it. Um, I see some germination on them, but nothing has done really well here. I've got some amaranth here. It's not really big enough to do very much with. 
but I'm going to leave it and see, you know, what pans out from it, I guess. Um, I may go in here and do a couple bags of raised bed mix and see if we can doctor up the soil enough to get somewhere. I am like 50% good on the weeds right now. So here's some sunflowers that have germinated. Like I say, any, any container that just doesn't have anything in it gets sunflowers. What dug that up, you know? This is our Cosmo bed and the orange Cosmos have done great. The other Cosmos would have benefited from a lot of staking that I did not provide for them. Our green beans are here. They've done pretty well for us this year. Um, they don't, they tend to produce and then fizzle out. I need to come out here and harvest again. Been harvesting every couple days and canning a couple of pints every couple days and that's been doing really well. Um, this had our onions in it and I was very impressed with our onion harvest this year. It's the best it's ever been. I would have liked the bulbs to be bigger, but for the most part, really enjoyed those. They were really great. So I pulled those. I, this is where I replanted all my squash here on the end, probably too close together, but maybe I can, I've thought about vertically doing squash, so we'll see if I do that. And then this right here is all another succession of zinnias that should be ready right on time. Leaving that empty because I like to pull weeds apparently, um, but also because, uh-uh, Minaru, no, no baby. Nope, stay out of there. We're getting some good germination on these zinnias actually like there's one no baby no baby oh, you gotta stay off the dirt part two three maybe we're not four probably need to come out here and water again I don't know it looks like the drip ran so we've got some germination on our squash two three I don't see the fourth one yet, but at least we got some good germination, so maybe we'll get some more squash. On this row, we have our tomatoes, and these have been doing really well. Um, down here, I have planted more green beans, and it looks like some of them have come up, and some of them I need to try to germinate again. That one clearly got eaten by something. Um, but we got more green beans coming in here for another succession. So I accidentally got way too many um, cherry tomatoes but they're looking really pretty um, here are there's a mixture of heirlooms and production like high production quality I have been very diligent this year about keeping these pruned um, really coming out here and pruning them a lot um, no fertilizer to these other than the biotone that we started with but keeping them pruned and keeping them trellis and I think it's made a big difference in my production We've got some more heirlooms over there, just looking great. I've got a whole, a whole harvest basket full in the house. Um, this one, unfortunately, I let grow into the thing. So today we're gonna eat that, but we're gonna have to cut it off the thing. Girls, come here, no, 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 come here. Ah, I don't kill the seedlings. And then here's our tomatillos, which again this year have done better than they had before. So that's good. Um, I've been, Again, pruning and keeping these up as well. Um, the next row here is black eyed peas or cow peas, which I need to come out and start harvesting these. They just dry here right on the vine. Um, and then next to those, I have our cucumbers. And I had been pushing the vines back, but I think I'm going to leave them alone and see if they will produce. I have gotten quite a few but not the explosion of cucumbers that I would expect. You know, cucumbers are super prolific. Here's this one that grew into the fence. See how it's like, like I gotta come in here and cut that off. Uh oh, I might be too late. Might be too late on that one. I could still probably cut some off, but it's getting eaten by the bugs. But I need to just come cut that off. But look at some of these tomatoes are looking really, really good. But there's plenty of like little tiny cucumbers on them but they just aren't producing big cucumbers. And I mean, not, not big, but like big enough to can or make pickles out of. They look like the plants aren't super healthy as well. So I'm just wondering if maybe this was a bad idea because they're not getting enough sun or whatever the case is. So this is why I planted another succession and I will stop trying to move them and just let them take over and see if that helps them to do better. 
We've also got our butternut squash here and we've got several squash on the vine. There's a honey nut and a butternut out here and there's several going for it. They just need to mature. Um, so that's good. I also planted some more lettuce and cilantro out here um, and some spinach and there's a little bit of spinach but I don't see the rest so maybe it's gonna maybe it's gonna germinate we'll have we'll have hopes for it we got time to plant it again if it doesn't so that's this row again same thing over here this is my okra and then my weeds um, I have been neglecting the heck out of this side I need to come cut some of that okra that we've got in there. Minaru. Oh, puppies in the garden. They're fun when they're with you, but then it's like, woof. So yeah, we've got, you know, like usually you'd have a ton of cucumbers and I just have, you know, this guy. There's plenty of like the little baby cucumbers on there. They're just not maturing into big cucumbers that we can use. So we're gonna leave them alone for a bit and see if they do any better and they may just need to catch up. This is the travesty. My corn was all up. You see all these strings and it fell in the last storm as it was ripening. So hopefully like that one's toast. They are something. All right, and then the next row is the production flowers and that has done fairly well for me. So when I got home from vacation, I had a whole ton of zinnias. I put a short up about that. Um, and then I've got some again. I've been harvesting very regularly. These are mostly Benares Giants. I've also got some Queen Lime, Peach Queen Lime, Red Queen Lime, whatever in here. Um, but I've still got a lot of buds. They don't look like they're succumbing to anything anytime soon. This is my primary source. Let me give you a shot this way. This is gonna be really chopped up. Look at that, how big that one is. I need to cut, cut that one back quite a bit so it doesn't just fizzle out on us. Um, Minaru, no. Girls. And then I've got all of my filler basil, which I've had a hard time getting this to hold in a vase. Um, but here it is. I think if maybe I let it get big enough that it would bloom before I cut it, that I might have a lot more success. But this is the only filler I have left. This vine is taking over. This is where our snapdragons are, were, and our bachelor's buttons. I just need to pull all this. And this is also where my weeding came to a stop, as you can very well tell. Um, and then we've got all of our dahlias. Our dahlias are doing better here than they ever have. They are getting murdered by Japanese beetles. Here's some more lamb's ear to create that hedge I talked about. Um, here's a good example. It blooms and they just cover it. So I do have those baggies, if I catch it on time, I will cover them. Some of these aren't doing really well. Some of them are, it's kind of hit or miss. I've not really had a lot of success with dahlias, um, but I need to come cover some of these blooms. Like this is all deformed. I need to come cover this one. You know, I just want those gigantic dahlia flowers. You know, is that too much to ask? But, um, So overall, I'm very happy with it. I did not like the straw at first. I don't know if I like it now. I would prefer wood chips for sure. Ray, no, Ray, Ray. I would prefer wood chips. Um, the straw sprouts and becomes a weed. I need to come in here. That's what I'm gonna do after I get done with this video is weed some more with these dogs. It might be interesting, but um, yeah, pretty happy with it especially the row of zinnias, especially those first three rows. If we can get some cucumbers, um, I'll be a happy camper. So last thing we're gonna go look at is the driveway pots. Um, I love this color combination right here. I love the dark colors against the bright silvery white. My Basset Hound pot feet are really cute. Um, I have been meticulously once every you know, month or two coming in and pinching out the center of my coleus. I mean, look how big this, this is one plant right here in that tiny little pot. And look what all it's doing. I do need to come in here, this black eyed Susan vine. I am so incredibly happy that I spent the money to get the color that I wanted. 
I need, do need to give the red begonias an opportunity and make sure that things aren't pushing on them too much. But I love these red begonias. They are gorgeous. They bloom profusely. They sun or shade. They don't need a lot of fertilizer. This is not on drip. If the rain doesn't hit it, maybe once I've had, maybe twice I've had to come out and hand water this. But it is amazing. That green with the red and the red coleus and the black sweet potato fine is beautiful. There are a couple of diamond frost euphorbia. They're in there, but they have totally been taken over. And I'm really kind of okay with that. I think a bright pop of white would be nice, but I'm okay with that. Um, it looks really good. I'm very happy with this. This one's going to be hard to pull in favor of a fall planting. The other pot, this is the one that's been hit the most of my Super Tunia Jazzberry. I have cut this back severely because A, it was huge. It was supporting a whole lot of vegetation. And I mean, look at it. It's, it's just being eaten alive. Um, something's getting the hostas as well. This hosta bed needs to be groomed something terrible bad, but um, yeah, I mean, there's definitely signs of aphid infestation, but it seems like more than that because those, those plants have been eaten pretty severely. So I need to put some Rose RX on them. Um, I will probably come do that tonight. They definitely need more fertilizer. This doesn't get 100% full sun. It's like the borderline of full sun and part shade. Um, and I love how it grew out. It looked really beautiful for a time, but now it's struggling. So we're going to try to see if we can get it back. Again, we did um, give her a nice haircut. We need to treat her and give her more fertilizer, lots and lots of fertilizer, and hopefully that'll help. Um, this is the hosta bed. It's the last thing we'll look at today. It needs to be groomed. These hostas get too much sun, but it's mature and it's beautiful most of the time, so I'm having a hard time knowing what to do with it. It's on a hillside, so if I removed it and replaced it, it would be kind of a pain. I could dig up every one of these hostas, divide them, and fill out that bed over there really nicely. But in the spring, this is gorgeous. I just need to come out and groom it, but they do get completely bleached out. But kind of their bleached out color is a nice contrast to the darkness of the house. Again, I like bright things because it's shady here. Um, but, you know, I don't know. I'll probably leave it. Need to come groom it though for sure. What you think, Minoru? What you think, girly girl? She's pretty. You ready to go take a nap? Are you ready to go take your nap? Well, that is going to be it for me in this garden tour. I need to go edit it and get it out. Um, hopefully, you can see some things doing super well. Really happy with them. Some things need some help. It's July. Things are starting to become overrun with bugs, overrun with heat. Luckily, we've had a lot of rain. But anyhow, that's going to be it for me in this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we will see you in the next one. Bye.